Hello, good morning everyone. Good day or good afternoon. So today we're going to measure the speed of sound in air. Okay, so sound is one of the most fastest phenomena and it's quite hard to determine its speed. In at normal temperature, let's say room temperature, it's about 346 kil, uh, meters per second. So it's really, really fast. Like the speed of a bullet, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose or add up sound waves. So I am going to produce a pure tone using a VFOX app here. So this is the app. I'm going to click on the tone generator. So there's a tone generator there, this one. And I'm going to set the frequency to about 440 hertz. It's, it should sound like this. That's the frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, place it here and then look for a water level where you will produce a reflection. So maximum vibration here, I will find that level that will produce the minimum vibration so that when it reflects, it will come back maximum at this part. So to maximum, you will have constructive interference. So they will add up. So I can even produce more or louder sound. So let's do it. So the way I will increase the water is I'm going to put the water, the, the faucet water here. We'll let it flow and it will, it will increase the level. And then the sound will ultimately increase. If I reach that level where there is minimum here, maximum here. And that minimum to maximum is one fourth of the wavelength one-fourth of the wavelength. So if I, if I know the water level where I produce a maximum sound, uh, I multiply it by four, I can determine the wavelength of sound. Now, there are some corrections later because there's some diameter corrections. I will introduce it in my calculation. And then I can now compute for the speed of sound using the wavelength and the frequency, which is 440. Let's do it. So here we have a faucet, we have water, Flowing water, just enough. Okay. And here I have a Fifox app. So here's the app. Click it and then it's usually here, tone generator. And then uh, you can actually change this. So in my case, I'll just use 440. And then I'll click enter. The sound is like that, 440. I'll pause it. It should sound like that. So now I am ready. So this is the initial sound. It's not that loud. But I'll increase the water level until such time or such a point where you will have minimum here, maximum here. Waves add up and then I have louder sound here. just use a, a ruler to determine the water level so let's have another trial using a thermos bottle so it's still empty I'll slowly put water on it here's a sound Toot. this is the initial sound not so loud I missed that part already. This is it. It is 2.5. 
to loud. Wow. Okay. I'll pause it now. And the way I will measure the height level for this is using a, a paper. Because I don't know. I cannot see it here, but I will use a paper. So, it's about here. It's about this level. Okay, so I'll take note of it. Okay. So, I'll measure it. I'll measure it. Let's see. I could have um, a lot of error. It's about 12.5. It's about 12.5. So I'll use it with my calculations later using this thermos. And of course, I, I will need to note the diameter, the inner diameter of this uh, opening. Okay, so let's do the calculations later. So, let us now calculate the speed of sound in air so we have earlier a column of uh, water so this is your your bottle of water and then we were able to find the water level let's say somewhere here okay and then the vibrations of the water of the sound maximum here so we were able to produce this kind of pattern let me use a different color for that this one maximum vibration here minimum there so waves add up but take a look if you're going to complete the whole wave it's actually one-fourth of the wavelength so this here is actually one wavelength and what we have here not to scale is about one-fourth of the wavelength that is the length that we've measured and later on we will need to include this in our calculation the diameter diameter or inner diameter of your of your glass or your, or your thermos bottle okay so the formula to determine the wavelength of sound in air is given by wavelength equals 4 times L plus 0 0.3 times the diameter this is a correction factor which were experimentally determined okay so for our example, our L, which we measured earlier, this one, it's about 14, somewhere 14.5, and later, uh, later on, we measure this 12 point, about 12.5. To our calculation, so for the first trial, we have 14.5 centimeter or 0 0.145 meter so let's now solve for the wavelength of sound so this is for your trial one okay so the wavelength of sound is equal to 4 times 14.5 centimeter plus 0 0.3 times the inner diameter which is 3.5 in my calculation okay then you should get an answer of about 59.05 or 59 centimeter or 0 0.59 meter. So now we know the wavelength of sound and we also know the frequency that we used earlier, 440 hertz. That's the frequency or the pitch. But you know that the unit for hertz is per second, 440 per second. Okay, one over s one over second but they usually use the as a unit which is hertz so what is now the velocity of sound in air the formula is frequency times wavelength substitute the values frequency is 440 uh, per second i'll just put it the denominator times 
the wavelength that we gather the data is 0 0.59 meters. So the unit should be meter per second because that's velocity. Okay, use your calculator, you should be able to get an answer of 260 meter per second. Okay, so that's the velocity of sound in air. Okay. Now, I think we are quite far from the from the true value. Okay, the, if we're going to use a more accurate, reliable data, actually there's another formula for the velocity of sound. That is, velocity of sound equals, um, what's the formula? 3, 3, 1 meter per second plus... 0 0.6 times the temperature of the room where we gathered our data and that time this is actually 25 degrees celsius so you substitute the value 331 plus 0 0.6 times 25 degrees celsius there's another formula for this but this is a more accepted or commonly used so here we were able to get 346 meter per second so you can see that our our gathered data is a lot different than the actual or more reliable data. Cons consider this as a true value, the 346. So our percent error in this trial is actually about uh, this minus this absolute value over this times 100. Okay, and my percent error for this trial is 25%, which is actually quite high. Okay, but if you've noticed, our, our setup here is not perfect. This is not a perfect cylinder. So you can see the shape. Perhaps if you can use a better cylinder, you'll get more accurate data. And this one is obviously not a perfect cylinder. L look at that. The diameter is different. My inner, there's outer, middle, whatever. So I'll expect that I have a high percent error here. So let's have another trial. For trial two, okay, we use a Let's say this is your trial two. We use a thermos bottle. In that case, for trial two, the L is, I think we've measured it earlier, it is about 12.5 centimeter. So again, compute for the wavelength, four times uh, L plus 0 0.3D. Here, our diameter of the thermos bottle is about, if I'm not mistaken, 5.5 centimeters. So substitute the value 4 times 12.5 centimeter plus 0 0.3 times the diameter which is 5.5 centimeter. Use your calculator, you should be able to get the wavelength of hmm, it's about 52 centimeter or 0 0.52 meter. Now substitute that, we know the frequency. The frequency is uh, 440 hertz that's per second times a wavelength now is 0 0.52 meter so we'll go this way velocity is equal to you should calculate or you should be able to get an answer of 227 meter per second still quite different from the true or the standard value is this one okay so let me compute for the percent error our percent error here is about 34 percent okay which is quite high okay I'm going to make another video later on so okay guys so I'm going to make another video later on using an apparatus which are specially designed to measure the speed of sound and air and that is the resonance tube stay tuned I will make a video for that for that later on for now I'd say bye-bye and uh, enjoy your experiment and keep on learning guys